This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Um, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker for the 102nd long table today. Uh, this is Professor Jerome Jambu, who is our visiting scholar for this year's ANS Summer Seminar. Uh, professor Jambu is uh, based at the University of Lille, where he is Professor of Modern History. He's also a former curator of uh, modern coins at the uh, National Library of France, at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, uh, where he was for about five years. He also serves as an expert in archaeological numismatics for the Ministry of Culture in France and as an expert for the Numismatic Scientific Committee for the Banque de France. Um, he is widely published. Uh, he most recently, for example, published in the ANS's own Journal of Early American Numismatics uh, with an article entitled The Coins of the French West Indies Company Made for the Islands and Mainland of America. And he also just recently published an extensive catalog of the holdings of American coins in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Um, those of you who joined us last night for uh, Professor John Boo's Money Talks know that he's a rather entertaining speaker, and this lecture today promises to be no less entertaining. However, I do have to offer a bit of a warning. This will be one of the more raunchy money or long tables we've had, as well as one that's a little bit more sexually explicit. So probably not safe for work and probably not safe for children, but for that, um, it, it should be entertaining. So, um, Jerome, all yours. Turn it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, dear Peter, and thanks to the INS. Is it okay for this? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, while studying iconography on coins is a major pillar of ancient numismatics, it has been curiously ignored for modern and contemporary periods, especially in Europe, except for medals. I became interested in this problem recently on the occasion of a study day organized for the Société Française de Numismatique in 2017 with my friend Thibault Cardon. This event, centered around sensual, even sexual representations, thought to associate gender studies and numismatics. Strangely, some readings of modern coinage have been poorly perceived by some academics. However, this period has associated archives that, unlike the older periods, can confirm the views we have taken and the work that still needs to be done. Because coins are seen as common and usual objects, representations are often rather simple and aim to transmit messages easily understood by the public. However, the interpretations users make about this imagery tells us a lot about their cultural environment, their state of mind, and their world perception. It is therefore useful to keep in mind two things. First, what kind of messages the emitting power wanted to communicate? And secondly, to see how the users, the people, interpreted the iconography of these coins. We will also focus on the role of the middlemen, the engravers, in transmission of messages which they call, could have sorry, initiated themselves, for example. For example, sorry, I will focus on two areas in which I am specialist the Spanish Empire and the Kingdom of France. Yeah. 
It is quite sure that the issuer of coin had a message to deliver to its users. You know that. Two examples, Spanish and French, allow to recall it precisely. About the Spanish monarchy's hegemonic program, for example. This appears on the obverse of the coins with the coat of arms before the introduction of the king's portrait in the early 18th. The coat of arms, moving with the time, indicates the origins of the king, Castilla y León, Catalonia, Flanders, etc., then France with the Bourbon dynasty, and on the reverse, the iconography presents symbol of Christianism, particularly Catholicism. The cross of Jerusalem recalls the commitment to find against, against the heresy of the Spain king that did the Reconquista against Muslims and Jews, like a crusade. They conquered America, the Conquista, to evangelize the pagans, like a crusade, too. As Reyes Catolicos, they are the first protectors of the religion, and so, in, and so it are their only attainment to reconquer a day Jerusalem, the city of Jesus Christ. And it was in the official plan of Christopher Columbus to find a western path to take the Jerusalem by storm. The fleur de lys, sacred flowers, evoke the parable of the lily spoken by Jesus Christ to praise the benefits of God. You can read in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 28 to 34. On the coin, the king of Spain, the king of, of Spain sorry, says, I am the greatest king, protector of the faith. The king of, uh, uh, of Spain uh, wants saying who owns the world. And we can see that uh, in this example. The pillars of Gibraltar of, or Herculean columns were the end of the ancient world, but Spain passed them by, hence the presence of the motto created by Charles I, plus ultra, equal, always further. This feat was achieved by means of the seas crossing the oceans. It allowed to discover a new world which now surpasses the old world in no opportunities, and its position it is in the forefront. All of this was under the domination of the Spanish monarchy, as the composition shows. The walls are framed by columns symbolizing a territory that belongs to Spain and topped by the Spanish crown. Hence the presence of a new motto, Utraque Unum, they form one block. It is indeed the empire on which the sun never sets. On, the, on this coin, the, Spain, the king Spain says, I rule the world which belongs to me. We can see another example in the French kingdom. At the beginning of his reign, Louis XIV, 14th, with 14th, was represented in the antique style, as was his father, and was all the European sovereign. But in 1672, when, when the war sorry, against Holland began, 
a completely different iconography was chosen, resolutely modern. If there is nothing new in the wing, which the king was already wearing since he lost his hair, everything else is innovable. The king wears modern armor, and no longer the armor of the ancient imperators. It shows that the king himself is going to the war, leading his troops and facing the test of fire. Added to this, the tie, a fashion accessory created in the French court. However, the tie was a military accessory. The king pays tribute to one of his famous foreign mercenary battalions, the Royal Croats. Croats, the name of the people from Croatia, Croatia. This, but the Royal, the Royal Croats, sorry, who wore a piece of clothes around their neck to, dis to distinguish themselves in the battle. And as tie is called cravat in French, this name from this name comes from Croat, Cro Croat, cravat. With this type, the French king, who starts the second war of his personal reign, again an invasion war, wants to show his commitment and rally his people behind him as a warrior leader. So, it is thanks to the use of a simple and impressive iconography, whose codes were known by everyone, that the sovereigns of the modern time thought to reach their people. However, the people, far from the political and religious preoccupations of the poor, could understand these messages differently. The French example teaches us that sensuality and sexuality were well, part of the popular preoccupations in a world looking to free itself from the religious power. Yeah, it was. I wanted to do that. <laughs> First example with this coin. <clears throat> when the Archducts Albert and Isabella became regents of the Spanish Netherlands, their status gave them the same role and power. They were shown, their two portraits overlapping, and the Ducatons made since 1618. But the French who received these coins, since the cash circulated beyond the borders of issue, quickly nicknamed them Bezois, or more frequently Bajois. Why? The interpretation was romantic, i.e. so French, because the word baiser means both a kiss and the verb to kiss in English. And when they saw in this representation the Archiduke placing a kiss on the check of the Archduchess, this is was whether good natured and did not cause any consequences. It is different with this other example. The French people could, however, as you might accept, have a much ranchier mind 
1723, a new gold we was created in France, this gold we. The effigy of Louis XV, uh, uh, too young to govern, is the work of the Regency. The regent, Philippe d'Orléans, was particularly decried after the John Law disaster and his supposed debaucheries. The archives tell us that the new gold we, that the new gold we, sorry, was the most immediately nicknamed Mirliton. For three centuries, the nickname was used, and today, numismatists still use it without knowing what it means. Why Mirliton? The word Mirliton was the buzzword created by the people of Paris the same year, 1723. In its first mentions, it was used to designate all sorts of new things. But very quickly, it came to designate, designate the female sex. Indeed, several poems and songs made it clear that Mirliton had the same colloquial connotations as excuse my French pussy. I tried to translate one poem and one song into English, but they rarely should be read in the original language and you are this translation. I will uh, do it in French. Ce que jeune fille n'ose, n'ose appeler de son nom, ce que d'autres appellent chose, chose qui n'a point de nom, c'est un mirliton. This is the first poem. And for the song, Le berger aux trois déesses fit ôter les mirlitons, il vit trois paires de fesses et trois paires de tétons, et des mirlitons mirlitaines et des mirlitons dondons. You have a beast you can do at home. Et des mirlitons mirlitaines et des mirlitons tontons. So, these ditties are pretty. And there are, of course, more vulgar ones, mocking the court's ladies, which I spare you. But why give the name of the female genitals to this gold Louis? A closer clinical look offers a bit of insight. While the interrides else recall the labia minora, the hollow that they form in their center suggests what the medicine of the period called the external orifice of the matrix or vagina. vagina. Therefore, the two open returns evoke the upper part of the vulva, clitoris and cap. The most remarkable aspect is probably the palms enveloping the matrix, which can be compared to the large and airy labia. The pilosity of the genital organs was then indeed preserved and appreciated. What allows us to confirm this interpretation is that in just few months, and very exceptionally, the Mint Court of France modified the engraving at no other time. Um, sorry, at another time in France, was the iconography of coinage so quickly corrected without changing the value of the coin. If these few French examples may seem surprising. They are very representative of the gravely popular sex obsession. But most seriously, this doesn't remove the influence of popular culture in numismatics, which we must consider to understand the courts.
even more surprising may be the liberty taken by some engravers in coin production. Their shows also reflect cultural influences or and their state of mind. Because if they received models from the coins to make, they should take the opportunity to pass messages explicit or implicit. First, the testuns of François I always present the king with a long and strong nose, which will not have displayed Cyrano de Bergerac. It is true to life, as his painted portraits show, that he had a big nose. The Lord Louis Alum, Lieutenant General of Orléans and Poet, what of the king occupat immenso qui tuta numismata naso. The length of his nose files all the coin. Numismatists have often accused the engraver of giving the king too long nasal appendage. For example, Jean Lafaury wrote the portrait of Francois I often turned to caricature. This, however, is a failure to understand the king's wish to show his virility. Sorry. The nose is a sensual appendage associated with one of the five senses, smell, which is the center of pheromones inviting sexuality. It was also considered since ancient Rome that the size of the nose gave prestige and informed as a preapic symbol on the dimension and capacity of the viral member. There are many allusions in the writings at the same time of François Rabelais. Two dictums were at the time famous on the borders of sources of sources France where the great noses of François I were engraved. In Italy, al naso cognoscere il cazzo. And in Provence, gros nas, gros dobas. Excuse my French again, but that means big nose, big dick. It was therefore both a reason for pride the man king who did not fail to prove the state of virility by a multitude of conquests, and for his people, always reassured by a sexuality coupled, a sexuality coupled sovereign, necessary for the stability of the heredity monarchy. Other example, different. In the new mint of Mexico, at the beginning, the equipment, the dice, and the engravers came from Spain. But with the creation of a lot of mints in America, as activity increases, local engravers were trained. Two influences can be seen in the four LS coins of Mexico during the um, um, 15th quarant, uh, quarant, no, not in, in Spanish, uh, uh, 15 and um, 14th. Uh, in the castle, as Mr. Ilthwar has already shown in the gene of June 2020, the building recalling both the sacrificial temple and the wall of schools of Tenochtitlan, but also in the lion. This animal doesn't exist in America but the jaguar replaces it. It constitutes part of Tsitsimitl, the sacrificial gold from Rome anthropophagy was practiced, such as it is represented, for example, there in the Codex Maria Becciano, dating from the same time of that, uh, these coins with the moose 
wide open, with which comes a big tongue, inviting his guests to the feast. The Spanish missionaries had, in the years following the expedition of Cortes, to convert Central American Indians and destroy their ancient religious beliefs. There is a survival of this culture, a display of memory as a pied de nez to the conquering authorities. Third and last example about the Amdin style on the uh, piece of eight of uh, the myth of Lima in, uh, created in uh, 1809. This case is different. The portrait of Ferdinand VII, although at first puzzling, was not in fact entirely invented. A model, like an engraving, was used. The slight slackness, the strong sheen, and the drooping nose are evidence of this. We can see the drawing dated uh, 1808, uh, conserved in Madrid in the Museum of the Prado. And it is, was uh, and it was with this particular hairstyle that he was represented in Spanish South America. If you see, for example, the painting preserved in Santiago de Chile. This representation in South America before the official portrait arrived. In fact, Ferdinand VII was the legitimate successor to the Spanish throne and his empire when Napoleon III the first, attacked the peninsula. The war prevented normal relations between Madrid and America, and it meets, of course, which remained royal to the monarchy. So, they did what they called to make coins with the portrait of the sovereign they recognized, while in Spain they produced coins with that of the tyrant's brother. Unquestionably, the Indian influence shows truth in this portrait of naive style that they are drawn or engraved. And we can look this imaginary portrait of Pachacutec, the great Inca, from the middle of 19th century preserved in Denver. The influence is uh, totally easy to recognize. However, one should not see any lack of respect in this representation, but on the contrary, an expression of fidelity. The fact that an engraver should be influenced by his cultural environment is a reality. Either they use it quite openly or discreetly or doesn't even realize it. Monetary iconography for modern times has been for a long time only descriptive. Numismatists are to interest only in official text. And they have a competitive tendency to fight over, the, over uh, the use of this or that word to designate this or that detail, etc. It is, however, obvious that if we want to understand the history of a coin, we have to associate numismatics and cultural history, like, for example, gender studies and drop out and drop our, sorry, old inhibitions. Today,
Today, this debate exists. In France, for example, it was a scandal when the French creator, Jean-Paul Gaultier, drawled the region Corsica like a sadomasochist woman. It was a sacrilegious against Napoleon. And the granddaughter of Pierre Mander France was horrified to discover a death mask uh, about his grandfather. It's why these coins were unappreciated in France. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Jerome. That was uh, wonderful and entertaining. And I, I would just like to uh, um, let our readers know that uh, if you'd like to follow up on at least one portion of his talk today in the Revue Numismatique of 2021, you'll find an article uh, that he co-wrote um, on uh, the, uh, the uh, portion of the Militon um, part of today's talk. So you, you can read about it there if you'd like to follow up on that. Um, are there any questions or comments or concerns? <laughs> Absolutely, utterly convincing, it would seem. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, now, in fact, I, I'm, I'm really amused by the uh, the last slide that you showed with the um, Corsican um, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, Napoleon. Um, you know, as, as somebody who serves on the Citizens Coinage Advisory Committee, uh, which, which is a committee uh, that helps uh, select designs for uh, U.S. coinage. I, I can say that a design like that would probably never pass and would never be minted in the United States. So at least you know it says something about differences uh, you know between the United States and and France in terms of what is allowable on, on modern coinage. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I guess the Corsicans were pretty upset. <laughs> Apparently, right. Corsican people uh, were, were very angry. <laughs> well, in fact, we should try to obtain one of those coins for the uh, for the, the American Numismatic Society's collection. I think that would be uh... yeah. But the, the coins were not um, Jerome. The coins were not withdrawn, so they they are available at the um, uh, Monet Paris. These coins, yeah, in the BNF. Uh, the, the 2016 was not withdrawn, so it, can you still buy it at, on, on the Monet de Paris website? Uh, not, uh, you, you, you can uh, see it on uh, the BNF, Cabinet des Médailles website. Yeah. But to purchase it. Ah, the last, the last coins or all the other? No, no, the one, the one with Napoleon as a... Ah, yeah, Monet de Paris. Yeah, yeah, sorry. From Monet de Paris, yeah. Very good. The other came from um, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, but this one, yeah, Monet de Paris. Yeah. And you have a big series uh, of uh, this coin for all the regions um, from uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, but the Corsica is the more explicit. <laughs> no, but one, one important point that you do bring up in this talk is um, the difference between, say, the official intentions of yeah. state producers and how then that image is interpreted by the populace. And in fact, this is something that uh, we do discuss on the CCAC uh, in our selection of, of the uh, imagery that appears on US coins. We, we try to at least think a little bit ahead and yeah. um, try to, you know, or at least wonder how these images will be received and perhaps interpreted and try to be, you know, again, very careful about the selection of the images for that very reason. Yeah, with, so we, with, yeah I mean, there, there's the, no way to control the interpretation yeah. of that, of course, but at least, you know, we're, we're trying to um, think about that. Yeah, with the Mirliton, for example, the, the representation is the 2L 
of Louis, very traditional, and the palms for victory, you know? Just, and the engraver didn't, didn't think uh, <laughs> other things <laughs> like Louis and Louis and victory. So yeah. that it's very interesting to, 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 to read the archives when the uh, um, uh, coins court uh, decide in urgent uh, with, uh, to, 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 to change and send a lot of new dyes and a lot of uh, letters to all the myths in the kingdom to change. Uh, and with words and expressions not explicit but implicit. We have something to change, but the reason is no um, mentioned. Uh, uh, it's necessary to change, but no more. You know, it it was really really the the panic uh, in the the coin squad in Paris. Yeah, right. Now, in fact, uh, one one thing I do want to mention too about uh, Jerome's scholarship is is that he does spend a great deal of time in archives, uh, looking through archival material, and and he finds a tremendous amount of contemporary information in those archives about uh, the way that coins, for example, were interpreted, as well as um, just the use of coins and so forth. And this you know, really does underscore the importance of, of trying to find contemporary sources to answer a lot of these questions. Because of course, um, over time, uh, you know, things are forgotten, things are misremembered and, and so forth. And so uh, it, it really does require uh, when these types of records are available, you know, obviously for the ancient world, we wish they were available, but they really aren't. But at least for uh, the more modern periods, there, there are a lot of archival resources um, and it certainly does behoove numismatic scholars to spend a, a great deal of time in, in those archives, um, digging through all of those um, types of materials. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure um, we can use this um, experience for modern times to try to do comparison to uh, with uh, ancient times, you know, because um, to interpret some, we can imagine problem on the coins, it, on the coin, etc. Uh, because you are a lot of ancient coal, coin specialists, isn't it? Right. Um, right. You, 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 you should be used this modern um, uh, works to, to to compare and to have ideas to interpret uh, maybe some 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 problem, yeah. Yeah, no, in fact, that I that that's a very good point, and I do use uh, uh, modern analogies, or at least say post classical or post ancient uh, analogies, uh, very often in my own work for trying to understand problems with some of some ancient coins, and because um, this this type of analogy. Uh, very often is, or, or at least does provide um, considerable insight into the way that people, at least in other places and times, uh, interacted with coinage, um, you know, coin iconography, as well as just coinage as money or coinage as uh, um, some sort of social instrument of one sort or another. So, you know, I'm, I'm very much uh, in favor of that type of um, uh, just a broader perspective in, in terms of uh, approaches to some of these problems. And in fact, that, that is something that we also try to teach in the summer seminar um, by providing this broader overview of coinages of different times, places, and so forth. And really, again, try to underscore both commonalities in coin use and approaches to coins, as well as you know, the obvious differences. So you know, again, that broader perspective, I think, is very useful. Jerome, hmm. I have a question for you. Um, with the Euro coin, um, designs are changing a little bit more frequently than they used to on French coins, say, you know, during the Franc uh, period, uh, noted, most notably with the two Euro 
it seems like there's a new design uh, every year or maybe even several uh, per year. Do you, or have you noticed an uptick in people talking about coin designs since the designs are changing more frequently or is it, is it not really in the news or anything like that? Um, for Euros, um, it's a um, politic decision at the, at, at the creation. Only one type for uh, a, a country, a type. But the exception is the two euros coin. The two euros coin can be used one time a year to create a commemorative uh, coin and the country has the choice but like the two euros coins can circulate in all the other countries it could be a problem for example uh, a few years ago Slovenia decided to uh, engrave an orthodox cross on the coin. And for the neighbor states, it was a problem because we have Catholic, Protestant, Muslims, etc. So, you know, coins can can be today refused because because uh, okay a religious symbol in an area so um, particular than Europe it was a, a, a problem but we say we it's a consensus you know one type one state one type only something different for the two euros but be careful you can't engrave um, symbol could be problematic like politic symbol or a religious symbol intriguing thank you do we have any other comments or questions? Well, Jerome, it seems like you've uh, you've silenced the crowd. <laughs> Absolutely convincing, no doubt. Um, you know, once again, I would I would really like to thank you for uh, this this wonderful talk this afternoon, and and all actually for all of your efforts. Thank you we for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below.